Samphire. In the chill of a cloud-scudding October dawn, in the lee of a small Cornish bay, she tumbled and sported amid the white crests with an otter who joined her to play. She was a nixie, a nymph of the waves, a swift swimming breather of brine. She danced with the tides, she was lissom and sleek, and her beauty could turn a man's mind. So she hid her lithe frame from the fisherman's gaze, and instead spent her time teasing crabs, and herding up eels to the puffin's bright beak, and otter dives down to catch dabs. Undine and kelp witch, and otter and girl, all chased through her protean form. Her name was Samphire, she sang to the sea, and her beauty was ever newborn. Stood the knight of rainbows on his crag above the bay, and he gazed with a smile on his daughter. Yet his heart it was snarled upon a long growing pain, as she played far below with the water. Samphire, otter girl, we must away, to your destiny we must depart. We shall hie to the court of the great Dovar Ku, and those words sent a jolt through his heart. It hurt him full sore that his daughter should leave, betrothed as the Otter King's wife. An islet she'd been of beauty and joy midst the measureless span of his life. But the knight had his duty, his oath-given task, and he'd put off the thought for too long. So he shouldered his seven-hued armour, and Samphire ceased in her song. Her tears freely flowed as her father approached, tread slow neath the weight of his armour. His child would go as an unwilling bride, and he hunted for words that would calm her. With a turn and a shimmer, she darted away, bright tears in a trail behind her. The knight gave a sigh, then a deep-throated cry that summoned a skewer to find her. As he waited, he pondered the promise he had made to the great Dovar Ku. The debt was still owing, and he'd entered it knowing that this was what she'd have to do. And yet no daughter of his was mere chattel. The Rainbow Knight's child could not be. And an idea found form in his great armoured head as he stared at the roiling sea. At length she returned with an eel in her teeth, her otter form flowing about her. She would go to the king as her father decreed, and the old knight had no cause to doubt her. They would first travel west, to the end of the land, and then they would cleave to the north. With a last sorrowed glance at her small Cornish bay, the Otter King's bride flowed forth. The Knight of Rainbows growled a charm that his ship should roll in on the break. Adwaitia came on the high seventh wave, with a spectrum of spume in her wake. She was a beauty. A mariner's dream, with thirty strong oars at the rail, all carven from oak and slim in the beam, seven stars on her billowing sail. The knight and the nixie they hove to with speed, an easterly wind to their aft, she as an undine at one with the swell, and he at the helm of his craft. Mailed fist on the tiller, the ancient knight mused as Adwaitia cut ways like a sword, thought back to a battle an earth age ago, to that time when he'd given his word. He had knelt with head bowed in that blood-rattled marsh, Dovar Ku stood, white pelted and grim. The knight's troops saw diminished, their resistance near finished, as the Grindilo horde slithered in. Great Lord, I beseech thee, Lend us thy aid, he had pleaded in desperate petition. The king acquiesced and sent forth his best, victory gained with one weighty condition. The king had looked down with a glint to his eye, with a smile that played at his jaw. Your daughter I claim that she be my wife, but your daughter she shall be no more. With a hollowed out heart, the knight had agreed. The king sent his water dogs baying, they tore at the slimy fanged Grindilo horde till no single survivor was straying. Your son fares a beauty, I have heard tell, said the king when the battle was done. 
She is that, said the knight, and the heart's love of me. I shall rue to my end to what I've done. Oh yes, very comely, I seem to recall. The Dovar Coo's grin was complacent. The knight raised his great head and stared out at the waves. Somewhere in this, his plan nestled, nascent. Samphire came aboard and gnawed hard on a hake as an otter curled up in the stern. The mate saw it done that the sails be trimmed, for the weather was taking a turn. The squall came a-screeching, the rain hard and lashing, yet Adwaitia was journeying soft. She slipped like a blade through the peaks of the waves, never once did she dip to the troughs, and spread in her wake in a seven-hued swathe, a rainbow entwined with the water, and there in its midst, as a glittering spray, Samphire, the Rainbow Knight's daughter. As they skirted the lizard and skimmed through the shoals, at last did the sea fall to calm. But a terror then broached from the limbering swell, Lord Malgor had come, bent on harm. Malgor was lord of the westering seas, a dragon of mythic dimension. The knight drew his sword and called up to the drake, in a tone that commanded attention. Mighty William, let us pass in good order, and we'll leave you our blessings and thanks. Do not make the mistake of attacking, or I'll have at your barnacled flanks. Do not waken my anger, large lizard. Do not get my proverbial goat, else I'll scabbard my sword in your gizzard. Moments after I've carved out your throat. Malgor reared up to a towering height, and he roared with exceeding vexation. His urge to destroy was a furious need, but he well knew the knight's reputation. With rage in his salt-crusted, murderous eyes, the Sea Lord commenced to sink down. There were plenty more vessels to splinter and rend, and plenty more sailors to drown. Adwaitia swept westward to Albion's end, swung north to the wide Irish main. When their course was set fair, the knight took to his berth to ponder the plan once again. He emerged as the sun fell to setting and gazed up at the full hunter's moon. For the plan to succeed, to set Samphire free, then one must be sought who could come to their aid and would perhaps grant them a boon. He called to his side the Pelagicus, who flies in the teeth of the gale, and he and the tiny pied bird did converse whilst she rested on Adwaitia's rail. At length the Pelagicus leant to the wind and set off in the gathering gloaming to seek for the noble night cormorant, wheresoever the great bird was roaming. The cormorant knight Phalacrocorax came, with joy cried a guttural skirl, he fixed a bright eye upon his old armoured friend and on Samphire, formed as a girl. He said, I am joyous to see you again, my comrade and brother in arms, and indeed reacquaint with your daughter Samphire, whom I note has lost none of her charms. Samphire smiled and flowed into otter, twitched her whiskers and flowed into water, then silvered with moonlight, flowed back into girl, the Rainbow Knight's ever new daughter. Alas, mighty bird, her beauty shall wane if she and the Otter King troth. He'll trammel her soul into Otter alone, all because of my rash given oath. But her protean soul has a side rarely seen, for the Kelp Witch is also Samphire. If the proud Dovar Koo casts his eyes on that guise, it surely will halt his desire. As the Rainbow Knight spoke, so did Samphire change. Phalacrocorax shied with a start. He was puissant in magic and matchless in war, yet the sight threaded fear through his heart, for a Grindilo crouched there before him, all scales and kelp fronds and claws. The eyes that met his held the cold of the deep, and barnacled fangs filled her jaws. When at last she changed back, the bird turned his bill, on the old knight his clever eye fell. Your plan is now clear, 
The coup's kingdom draws near, so I'll bend my left wing to a spell. The mage Falacrocorax woe but is weird, as Adwaitia swept north through the night. Then the sail was trimmed to a westerly tack, and the red rising sun lit their sight. The water dog horde came to escort them into the Dovar Coo's coastal dominions. The cormorant knight said, "'Tis done, I'm away," and was gone with two beats of his pinions. The castle loomed large as Adwaitia neared shore, and Samphire watched from the rail. She was clad head to toe in viridian silks, with her face fully hid neath a veil. The wedding guests thronged on the broad pebbled beach, kings and princes and queens of all races, and they vied to draw close to the Otter King's bride. Curiosity etched on their faces. Foxes and fairies and eagles and stags were held back by the water dog guards as the knight and the nixie entered Dovarku's hall to the strains of a song from his bards. At the altar he waited, the great Dovar Koo, his pelt white as new fallen snow. As he looked to Samphire, an eyebrow he raised as she stood clad in silks head to toe. Come now, my pretty, lift up your veil. I shall gaze with great pride upon your beauty. What your father shall lose, I rightly shall gain. Then you'll serve me with meek wifely duty. Samphire stepped closer and threw back her veil. The great king staggered backward in fright. She gave him a slimy fang, grindylo leer, and his eyes did grow wide at the sight. Great Dada, he cried, she's a monster, all scales and barnacled fangs. I expected an otter girl, lissom and sleek, with ribbons and bows in her bangs. You tricked me, he roared, in the godwater marsh you implied that I'd burn with desire, when I looked upon that which I'd taken from you. Knight of rainbows, I deem you a liar. The knight answered calmly, No liar am I, for to me she's a glittering prize. Her fangs and her fins are my fondest delight, as I gaze with a proud father's eyes. Be gone from my court, growled the great Dovar Koo. Take your foul daughter hence and depart. I never could countenance marriage to that. The old knight felt a peace in his heart. The trammelling spell that the Magus had wrought had worked, and Samphire was grateful. It wore off at last as they sailed away. She had found the experience hateful. To be trapped in one form with nowhere to flow defied what her nature decreed, and she spun through her forms in a dizzying blur as the ship headed south at a speed. As they rounded the rocks at the end of the land, to her father, Samphire, spake thus. All the fish in the seas cannot measure my love, all the haddock and herring and hus. But the deep of the ocean calls loudly to me, so alas, father, I must now leave you. I'll go far from the reach of the cliff and the beach, though it hurts me full sore to bereave you. She planted a kiss on his great armoured brow, and she flowed to the form he loved best. The knight hung his head, and his heart it did break, as his otter girl swam to the west. On his crag the knight stands, and looks out at the waves that crest white neath the cloud-scudding sky. And he thinks of Samphire, the heart of his love, as a tear trickles down from his eye.